a woman will give up on a relationship like that. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're sharing an emotional story. She can't stop crying after instantly regretting divorcing her husband. We'll explore the reasons behind her decision, the aftermath of her choice, and the lessons that can be learned from her experience. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss our latest videos. Let's dive right in and unpack this heart-wrenching story. Problem. Well, here's what I think. The reason that your relationships fail is that some of what you say is true. There's this rational calculation that people make when they're about to date, and so they factor in what they look like and, and how much education they have or lack of, um, and then they sort of seek for somebody that matches what they deserve, what they, what they calculate is what they deserve. And you're looking for women that physically match you. And so you're running into women who are just low life because they just uh, want someone with money. So everyone I married was a low life. Well, they just want someone with money because mm. if they wanted somebody... Well, if they wanted somebody with money, why did they sign prenuptial agreements? Why am I not paying them alimony? Why didn't they trick me into pregnancies? Oh, see, wow, you're really... Say you say all women want no that I never ever said all I never no I never said that in fact very specifically recently on this program she said bucking art um, very specifically on this program recently I said that I never ever diss my ex wives and I never blame them for anything okay ever well. I said. That if there was ever a fault, it was my own for picking wrong. I have said this, but you, without having all the information, jump right in and tell me you're going to solve my problems. I don't have any problems. The problem is not the people I married. The problem is getting married. No, it's not. There's lots of yes, I'm married. it I is. You know what? Mar marriage is not for everybody, and I, I agree. Marriage with you. is not for men. But let me tell you this, someday, and I know someone who, who was a wonderful guy, but he, like, did all this, he used to call it hit and run. He would just sleep with women and leave yeah. them. And then at 50 years, he was classic. He's a professor, too. This is my mentor professor. And he used to say, you know, hit and run, and that's it. And guess what? 58 years old, he had a stro diabetic stroke, and he was paralyzed. And I used to drive him back and forth to school. And this was a very sad guy. I mean, extremely sad because... He had no one. If he loved someone and they grew old with him, they would take care of him, even when he had a diabetic stroke. So that's what I'm thinking of for you, that you need someone for when you get old. Trust me, when you've got money, you've got all the best help in the world. Nah, it's not out of love. It's out of, you know... Trust me, and... many people who appear to be doing something out of love are trying to get into your will, or they're trying to get something else from you. See, what you don't get is that there are a lot of people that aren't that way. Oh, there may be some people who are that way, but the vast majority of them are not people who marry you. People who marry you have an agenda, and that is to share in everything you got. I don't want anything my husband has. If if we, God forbid, left each other today, he could have everything that we... Marriage has become a challenging proposition for men in today's world. The landscape has shifted so much that many men are questioning whether it's worth it. For generations, Marriage was seen as a partnership built on mutual respect, shared goals, and a commitment to building a life together. But now, the stakes have changed. The legal system often leaves men at a disadvantage, especially when things go wrong. Divorce rates are high, and the aftermath can be financially and emotionally devastating for men. It's not just the fear of what happens if things go south. There's also the sense that many modern marriages aren't about true partnership anymore. Some men feel that they're expected to shoulder most of the burdens, financially, emotionally, and otherwise, without receiving the same level of support in return. They see marriages where traditional expectations are placed on them, but where their needs, desires, and well-being aren't given the same priority. Then there's the issue of changing dynamics. Women are more independent now, which is a great thing, but it has also led to a shift in what marriage means. Men who want to be traditional providers might find that they're not needed in that role anymore, which can be disorienting. On the flip side, men who want a more equal partnership might feel frustrated if they're still expected to take on traditional male responsibilities without the corresponding benefits. So, for many men, 
the risk just doesn't seem to match the reward. They're looking at the modern marriage and deciding that it's not worth the potential downsides. Some choose to stay single, enjoying their freedom and peace of mind, while others look for alternative arrangements that better suit their needs and values. Marriage, as it stands today, doesn't seem to offer men what it once did. It's a complex issue, and every man has to decide for himself whether it's something that aligns with his goals and values. But increasingly, many are saying that marriage just isn't for them. <sighs> The court notified me that my final decree of divorce has been approved by the judge. I know that it sucks being alone. I come home and I'm alone. I go everywhere alone. I don't hardly talk to him anymore. <laughs> I don't blame him. I filed for the divorce. So I'm sure people are wondering, well, you filed. Why are you so upset? Why are you crying? Just because you make a decision that you think is going to end up making things better doesn't mean that you have to give up the fact that you love that person or that you did it because you were trying or whatever. I've never met anybody like him and I've never loved anybody like him either but I don't want a divorce. I still am very much in love with my husband. She thought she had it all figured out, didn't she? Filing for divorce, thinking she'd be happier without him, expecting to see him broken and hurt. But when he moved on without a second thought, it was like the rug was pulled right out from under her. Now, she's the one left in tears, regretting every decision that led her to this point. Here's the reality. She played the game, and she lost. She underestimated him, thinking he'd be the one to crumble while she walked away with her newfound freedom. But instead, he showed her what real strength looks like. He moved on, found his peace, and didn't look back. And now, she's the one stuck in the past, replaying every moment and wondering where it all went wrong. The truth is, a woman will often discard her family in pursuit of her own happiness, believing that the grass is greener on the other side. But a man, a real man, will sacrifice his own happiness for the sake of his family. He'll endure the pain, the struggle, and the heartache because he knows what's truly important. But when that sacrifice isn't appreciated, when it's taken for granted, he's not going to stick around forever. So now, she's left with nothing but regret. She wanted to see him hurt, but instead, she's the one who's hurting. She thought she could have it all, but in reality, she lost everything that mattered. And that's the price she has to pay for playing games with a man who was willing to give up everything for her. It's a harsh lesson, but one she had to learn the hard way. I'm not afraid of anything in this world other than not being there. Because how could it be that in a matter of three months, you are married to a woman of 15 years and you just get married again. Why did brother Khalid move on so fast? And mention to you sisters inshallah to understand from a man's perspective three to four reasons why a man moves on so fast. And we want to tackle these issues. Why? My dear sisters, I'm not here to make you upset, anxious, worried, you know, look at marriage in a way that you don't, you're scared of getting married. No, rather I want to inform you and inform you so that you can make rational decisions. I know you guys are emotional. That's how you guys are created. You have your hormones, imbalances, etc. Many other things. And alhamdulillah, we have those hormonal issues as well with testosterone. So, you know, it, uh, it affects us in a different way, it affects you guys in a different way. But if you listen and listen to learn rather than listen to reply, we will all benefit from this, inshallah. So first reason for a man to go his separate ways and move on so fast can be that he is married to someone who is really, really bad. And he tries his best over and over again, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters. And like I said before, we need to deal with the reality, yes? Okay, sometimes we know a lot of the cases men are quite violent in marriages. Both men and women are as violent, but men use more lethal force. So we know that's a fact, yeah? So what I'm going to mention to you next shouldn't really bother you, sisters, yeah? Women are known to initiate divorces. Majority of the time. Sadly, that's a reality. When women carry on, you know, oh, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, a man has enough, a point where he's enough. Or if the woman is a really, you know, an evil woman who's making his life hell. Now, again, I'm not saying that Sister Salama is like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, generally, for men, this can be a reason for him to not only get divorced, but move on so fast in a matter of months. That's number one. No. The real answer is simple. He moved on so quickly because he found the right person for the job. It's not about playing games or trying to prove a point. 
It's about finding someone who appreciates what he brings to the table and reciprocates the energy he puts into a relationship. When a man feels genuinely valued and respected, he knows he's made the right choice, and there's no reason to dwell on the past. Women often get caught up in their own narratives, thinking they hold all the cards. They assume they can end things on their terms and that a man will be left pining. But the truth is, many men are just waiting for an opportunity to be with someone who truly gets them. When that opportunity comes along, they're more than ready to move forward without looking back. The issue isn't that men are heartless or that they don't care. It's that they value their time, energy, and emotional well-being. And they won't waste it on someone who doesn't appreciate them. Women who play games or expect men to chase them endlessly often end up losing out because, eventually, men wise up and find someone who doesn't need to be convinced of their worth. So, if a man moves on quickly, it's not a reflection of his lack of feelings. It's a reflection of the woman who let him go. She underestimated his ability to find someone better, and now she's left wondering why he didn't stick around. The reality is, he didn't need to. He found someone who recognized his value from the start, and that's all he needed to move on. In the end, it's not about who wins or loses. It's about who recognizes a good thing when they see it. Men aren't going to wait around for someone to realize their worth. They'll move on to someone who already knows it. And that's why women end up regretting the choices they made. It's not that men have changed. It's that women failed to see what was right in front of them. What's going on with women these days? We used to be a lot happier than men, and now we're not. What happened? What you've found is that over the past 20 years or so, women have converged downward to the unhappiness levels of men. And at first I thought, great, men are getting happier. Huh? Uh, women are getting unhappier, is what we find. They're getting unhappier very quickly. And so there's a lot of different theories of it. You find that there's a lot less family formation going on. There's a lot less marriage. You find that men and women are diverging politically really, really quickly. You find that women are getting much much more politically progressive and men are getting more conservative. And so the result of it is that, especially in a culture where people think that the most important thing for making a romantic match is voting for the same party idiotically. Social media is especially targeted at young women. It's creating a whole lot of misery with the social comparison, with political hatred, with the sense of loneliness that's crawling out of people's smartphones. And all these things together are creating an epidemic of unhappiness among women, especially young women in our society today. It seems like many women today are trapped in a cycle of dissatisfaction, always searching for something more, yet never quite finding it. The truth is, they don't want to take responsibility for their own happiness. It's easier to point fingers, blame others, or claim that society hasn't given them what they deserve. But what they fail to realize is that true happiness comes from within, and without that internal sense of fulfillment, nothing else will ever be enough. Miserable women often drag others down with them spreading negativity and bitterness wherever they go. It's a sad reality, but one that's all too common. They wanted to be seen and treated the same as men, believing that equality would solve all their problems. But when they stepped into the world that men have navigated for centuries, they quickly found out that it's not all it's cracked up to be. Social media has only made things worse, feeding into their insecurities and unrealistic expectations. They compare themselves to others, constantly measuring their worth against an impossible standard. And when they inevitably fall short, the blame falls on everyone and everything around them. A small minority of loud, angry women have managed to ruin it for the rest, creating a culture of dissatisfaction and entitlement. Feminism promised them equality, but now that they've got it, many don't like what they've found. Instead of finding empowerment, they're discovering that the responsibilities and challenges that come with it are more than they bargained for. They wanted to be just like men, but in doing so, they've lost touch with what truly makes them happy. Women have been told that going out into the workforce, making money, and achieving success will fulfill them. But the truth is, for many, that isn't enough. The system has made it too easy for them to shirk responsibility, especially when it comes to life and marriage. And when there's no accountability, disaster is sure to follow. In the end, it's a shame. Women thought they were gaining freedom and happiness, but what they found instead is a world of discontent and frustration. They're becoming more masculine, losing touch with the qualities that once made them feel complete. And in the process, they're realizing that the things they thought would bring them joy are just empty promises. The cycle continues, and unless something changes, it's only going to get worse. 
go tell the men that served their country and got divorced, raped, got their children taken, that they're not a real man. Go, go tell them. Go ahead. <laughs> that it's their fault their marriage ended. I guess my question is in family court. Do you, do you think they know that the women are lying? Or- they don't care. Oh, they don't care. They know that the, they know the whole thing is corrupt. They, uh, Steve Baskerville wrote about this. They know precisely what they're doing in there. They know exactly what's going on. They know the family's being fleeced for all the money. They know the children are being destroyed. They know that the, and they just don't the, care. They don't care because they're it, making money. It's their that's this is their routine. This is what they do, and you know, family courts that I know of don't have cameras in them. There's no real appeals process for family courts. You just, whatever the judge rules, that's it. So they have impunity and they can do anything they want. And they do. The only thing that's going to save family courts in this country is bulldozers. Mow them down and rebuild. It's the only thing that will ever save them. It's just too corrupt. Do you think that's possible? (sighs) Not really. Yeah, I don't either. I wish it was. Family court is in desperate need of a massive overhaul, much like our prison system. The way things are set up now, it's as if the entire system was designed to fail those it's supposed to protect. The truth is, marriage under government rule has become one of the biggest scams ever, and family courts are just another arm of the population control mechanism, a system designed not to support families but to dismantle them. Think about it. Family courts serve as a deterrent to reproduction and the destruction of the family unit. They strip men of their rights, finances, and often their dignity, all under the guise of protecting the best interests of the child. But what's really happening? The system is being exploited, and it's men who are paying the price. Most women won't lift a finger to fight this corruption because, in the short term, it benefits them. As long as they're getting the upper hand in court, receiving alimony and child support, they don't see a problem. But what they don't realize is that this system is hurting them too, and not just in the long run. It's already happening. Men are waking up to the scam, and they're done with marriage. They've seen how the system is rigged against them, and they're opting out. This isn't just a few disgruntled men. This is a growing movement of men who refuse to sign up for a rigged game. And now, women are feeling the consequences. The pool of marriage-minded men is shrinking, and those who are still open to marriage are far more cautious, aware of the risks that come with it. In the long run, this hurts all women because when men stop marrying, society loses its foundational unit, the family. The ripple effect is enormous, leading to broken homes, fatherless children, and a society that's slowly unraveling. Women may benefit from the system in the short term, but the long-term consequences are devastating for everyone. The solution is clear. The family court system needs to be thrown out and rebuilt from the ground up, with fairness and true justice at its core. Until that happens, men will continue to walk away from marriage, and the institution will continue to crumble. It's time for everyone, men and women alike, to recognize the damage this corrupt system is causing and to stand together to demand change. Otherwise, we'll all continue to suffer the consequences. A woman will give up on a relationship like that. Men are more spontaneous when it comes to breakups. Women plan things in advance. So by the time she splits, she has already been thinking about it for a while. And then, of course, there's monkey branching. Women don't stay single for long. And I contend that all women are single at all times. She's just one excuse away from leaving you. Can they be trusted? Hmm. I don't know. The modern woman can't. One of the first things that you have to look out for is if a woman says that she is more of the traditional type and that she's not a modern woman, that's your first clue that she's a modern woman. When she says, I'm a traditional woman, or I take things slow. That means in the past, she hasn't taken things slow, but you're the lucky one now. Now you have to take it slow. We'll get into this more further in the 12 rules for men regarding women. Women often express their concerns and talk about problems, but as soon as they notice a recurring pattern, many will escalate the situation by arguing. If that doesn't resolve the issue, they may decide to end the relationship altogether. It's a cycle that leaves men feeling like they're on shaky ground, never quite sure if things are stable or if the next argument will be the last straw. Here's the truth. It's just your turn with her, 
so enjoy it while it lasts. Don't get too attached, because in today's world, relationships can be fleeting. The focus should be on yourself, on pursuing excellence in everything you do. Whether it's in your career, your personal development, or your hobbies, make sure you're constantly improving and growing. The key is to prioritize your own goals and ambitions over a relationship. This doesn't mean you can't enjoy the time you have with someone, but it does mean that your happiness and peace of mind shouldn't be dependent on anyone else. When you center your life around pursuing excellence, you're less likely to get thrown off course by the ups and downs of a relationship. In the end, the only true peace you'll find is in solitude. When you're content with yourself and your own company, you're free from the emotional roller coaster that often comes with being in a relationship. Solitude isn't about loneliness. It's about finding strength and contentment within yourself, knowing that your worth isn't tied to anyone else. So, enjoy the time you have with someone, but remember that your primary focus should always be on your own growth and well-being. Don't get too attached, because ultimately, the only person you can rely on is yourself. And when you're at peace with that, you'll find that solitude brings a sense of fulfillment that no relationship can match.